Hey and welcome to the channel. Thanks for watching. Today I'm going to do a quick and dirty tutorial on how to get the Aerosoft CRJ up in the air as quickly as possible whilst following most of the processes without leaving anything out but just having a really, really quick workflow that will help. I'm not going to go through all of the checklists and things. That There are much more thorough tutorials out there by The Dude and Phil that flies and some of the other guys that go into a lot more detail. For me, when I jump into the sim, I just want to get going really. So, um, so I just wanted to show you how I do things. Um, I can typically be up in the air within five minutes of loading the sim and uh, hopefully that adds value to you. So let's jump into the cockpit and we'll go through a cold and dark setup. Um, we'll go through taxi, takeoff, descent, approach, landing and shutdown. Hopefully that's of use to you. See you in the cockpit. So welcome to this absolutely gorgeous cockpit of the CRJ. So I've pre-programmed some custom views um, to my keypad. There are loads of videos out there that show you how to do that. Um, so I'm just going to switch to my top panel for a second, pop my battery on. I'm going to put APU left-hand button, and I'm going to wait about five seconds. I'm going to click the right-hand button. My nav light's going on, and my emergency lights button's going on. I'm now going to drop to the pedestal. And move the parking brake for a second so I can put the ADEAS on or the IRS. Brake goes back on. Stabilizer trim and the Mac. I need to do the yaw damper as well, but I can't do that until everything is kicked in. Next job for me will be the FMC or FMS. So we're just going to wait for the power to kick in, which should be any second now. There we go. First things first, we're going to go to position initialization. You probably know how to do this. Next page by clicking one of the links back and pasting. Now I'm going to go to flight plan and I'm going to import my flight plan from Simbrief. I have a tutorial on my channel which shows you how to do this if you're unsure how to set it up. We are E G B B E G P F. Click that inside and click execute. I'm going to go to my legs page now. I need to just make some changes so I know for a fact I'm going to have a problem here. And also there was a 26,000 in here somewhere. Yeah, there is. It should be um, 24,000. I noticed. We'll execute that. We'll now go back to flight plan and performance. 24 for all of that set. So I need to make sure that my zero fuel weight is set and my fuel is set in the sim. And I'm just going to simply do that on here. Performance, I'm changed to here. So my zero fuel weight needs to be 27815. Click in there and hit delete. 7815. Enter. And my fuel needs to be three, four, seven, eight. Let's click on the fuel. Delete, 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 delete. Three, four, seven, eight. Enter. And I'm going to set that in the sim. Beautiful. VNAV setup next. We're going to click next. Alt transition's been set by Simbrief, but it hasn't been set for the descent, so we'll set that in. And we will execute that. FMS is done. Back to the top panel now. Beacon's coming on because we're going to start moving shortly. 3A hydraulic pumps coming on. And we need to set our altitude now. I think it's six turns on this to get to 320 for Birmingham. 320, there we go, bang on. Okay. Back here, your damper is going on. Going to come up here and set our altitude now. 24,000. And at that point, flight director is going to come on. 
I won't touch anything else at this stage until we're, we're ready to take off. Need to set the barometers by hitting B twice. That will set the local pressure perfectly well. And I need to send the V speeds to the FMC, which is now done. And we're ready for pushback pretty much. So before we do push back, I need to make sure now that the hydraulics are on, the fuel pumps are on, and the windshield heats are on. We'll push straight back today in this space. And we'll get engine two ready to start. We just need to wait till we've got about 20% N2. While I'm pushing back, I'm just going to set my ILS frequency for Glasgow. Okay, and engine number one ready to go. We'll wait until we've got 20% N2 again on there. And we'll introduce fuel. Okay, and in terms of push, we'll stop the push just there. Parking brakes going on. Back to the top panel for just a very quick minute now. Air conditioning's going on, on and the recon air. Okay, I'm gonna put my anti-ice on. I know you shouldn't do it until you're in the clouds, but I've noticed there's invisible icing that completely ruins the flight dynamics. Put that on before you take off. I haven't had any problems at all. My taxi light is going on seat belts I should have put them on before my fault and I'm gonna pop on my probe heats now pretty much ready to taxi the only one thing I want to check I've done and set is my um, takeoff trim at 7.2 I'm at 6 so I'm just gonna adjust that now Let's get down to the runway. Just as we taxi in, the one thing I didn't do was set the flaps to flaps eight, which I'm just doing now. Okay, so we're at the holding point of runway 33 in Birmingham. We'll be flying off to Glasgow. Um, all I want to do at this stage now is make sure that my taxi lights go off, landing lights go on, strobe lights are on. I need to make sure that the reverses are armed And that the cross feed is selected. There we go. We are now ready to go. Okay. So just before we, we start rolling. I want to just synchronize the heading and switch heading on. Um, I want to push the speed on. Let's do this. One hundred knots, both sides, and V one rotate. Positive rate, gears going up. And the autopilot's gone on which will now happily help our climb. Flaps are going to the first stage. I'm going to switch over to LNAV. As I've just got to 2,500, I'm going to increase the speed on here to 250 knots, and I'm going to go to climb first. We now need to set standard and we need to disarm the reverses. Coming up on 10,000 feet now, speeds will increase to 290. Landing lights will go off. 
and that's it guys I'll uh, nothing much to show you till we get to top of descent so join me back in a few minutes well so now we're up at our cruising altitude I've just turned off the the wing anti-ice um, I will put it back on before we start descending because of the problems I'm seeing what I will do now is engage VNAV which will make sure we have a Vena path down and I will change my altitude down to the altitude I want to intercept the Alasa which will be 3100 little tip for you don't the actual Glasgow runway 23 ILS intercept is 2900 in this aircraft if you intercept it at the moment at the that altitude it will just nosedive. You need to intercept it slightly above. So I'm going to go 3,100 or 3,200, something around that. Now, if you haven't seen the VNAV path profile on here, you go to settings, which is under options, sorry, next page, and then switch on coupled VNAV available. And that will now give you a VNAV path and it will automatically descend itself down. If you don't wish to use that, you don't need to enable it or you can use vertical speeds and the advisory VNAV which the system has. Right, I prefer using this each to their own, right? Cool, see you at the top of descent. Okay, so coming up on top of descent now. A couple of things I need to do first of all is set my landing elevation. Now at Glasgow it's 20. Can I get it right my first turn? Yes, I can look at that, bang on. Brilliant, and the second thing is we need to load our landing data. So all we're gonna do is click set all, and that's done. So, we will automatically start to capture the path in a second, there we go, and we'll pull our throttles back. And we'll just manage our throttles to maintain 290 now on our way down. So the system will automatically now stop at every constraint. The first constraint is 24,000, which is coming up. So I'll fast forward it now for you, um, and I'll see you back when we're on the approach to Glasgow. Okay, so welcome back. You join me at 10,800 we are descending down towards Glasgow Airport and we're just about to extend some speed brake to bring the speed down as we know that our speed kicks into 2.30 at Lanark. Landing lights are coming on. So before things get pretty mad, just talk through what's going to happen. So we're going to vector ourselves towards the runway. Um, when we get down to the assigned altitude of 3,100, I think it is, 3,200, I'll then turn off VNAV. Otherwise, we won't be able to um, we won't be able to establish on the localizer. Um, it will be in the wrong mode, so we need to come out of that. Um, now, this aircraft does have a habit of dive bombing. It's not the fault of the aircraft; it's an Asobo fault. I'm told that as long as we attack the glide scope above and not um, at or below it, it shouldn't happen, but we'll be ready for anything. Um, should be interesting. Okay, we'll switch over to local pressure now. Speed's good. We'll go second stage of flaps. And we'll try and hold now around 200 knots. Biggest tip I'll give anybody in this aircraft is watch the speed. It can drop off so quickly without you realizing. Just keep constantly keep scanning. So what we're gonna do on here basically, just so you can see is we're flying north. We're gonna get to about this point and then turn on to the localizer. Before landing checks, the elevation is set and it's set at 20. You now need to engage the reverses. Make sure the landing speeds are set. Okay, so we're now gonna turn on to a heading of 270 to intercept the ILS. We need to make sure we've turned off VNAV, otherwise we'll have a problem. 
So at that point, we will turn off VNAV. We're below the glide anyway at the minute, so I'm not going to worry about descending. VNAV is off. We're now going to... Um, okay, we will arm approach, and then we're now localised established. Now we just need to watch for glide, and we don't get any weird results. Just watching our speed. Next stage of flaps, we want to keep at 180 now. We should just pick up the glide any second. Now this is where we need to see if we're going to just dive bum or we're going to come down. It looks like we're okay. Yeah, so unless anything goes drastically wrong and we dive bomb massively, it's about intercepting the glide in this aircraft above the final fix. So the final fix on here was 2,900. So I set at 3,100 um, and I've not had a problem. Every time I've, I've matched the final fix, I've just dive bombed. So that seems to be the correct fix for this. We're nearly seven nautical miles out, so we're going to drop our gear down. Again, need to catch that speed will drop very quickly. And the next stage of flaps. And we'll need to bring in some more thrust. We want to try and keep 180. Between 160 and 180 till 4 DME. We're holding 180 quite nicely right now. We're looking good, we're stable. And at 4 DME we'll go final flaps and final approach speed of 138. Okay, final flaps. Our speed should start to drip off now. You're going to need quite a fair bit of thrust to, to maintain your final approach speed. It drops really quick. Everything's looking good. Windy, floated it far too much. It wasn't my best landing, never mind. Okay, flaps up. Welcome to Glasgow. And we'll just stop for a second. Okay, and up to our top panel. Anti ice can go off. Probes can go off. Hydraulics just leave three alpha on. Strobes off. Landing lights off. Taxi lights on. Okay, um, let's go over to here, aircraft, set the wheel charts, set the electronic power, GPU, make that power available. Okay, engine 2 will drop. And 
and engine one will drop. Okay. Fuel pumps are going off. I'll turn the aircon off as well. Anti ice probes have already done. Hydraulics, beacon, taxi lights. And that's pretty much it, really. You're ready to preload and go on your next leg. Hopefully, that's been of use to you to get you in the air quicker. Well, I hope you check back for one of the next videos coming up soon, and I will see you again. Bye.